God reminded me of something last night that I had forgotten. Um, cause I've been really sick. I mean, I've been, uh, more sick, uh, than I've been in a long time. And it's been seven days running. Um, but God reminded me last night that his power really does show up perfect in our weakness. Right. And so it doesn't really matter how I'm feeling in the moment. He can still move. He can still use me as long as I'm moldable, pliable, like the clay and willing to be used. Right. And sometimes that's inconvenient. Sometimes you just want to roll over and go back to bed because you don't feel good. But it's not about whether or not you feel good. It's about what does God need from me today? What does God need me to do? Let me move myself out of the way and how I'm feeling in this moment and and put my focus um, on an eternal perspective, right? Because it's not, it's not about me. It's about winning souls, right? And the fact of the matter is somebody died last night. Somebody died last night and that was their last chance to accept the free gift of salvation. It was their last chance to hear the good news of the gospel. It was their last chance to accept the gift of the grace of God that was being extended to them. It was their last chance. And so whether I'm, I'm feeling like it in the moment, um, I need to remember and never forget. And I'm speaking to all of you as well. You need to remember and never forget the authority that you walk in. Because not every sickness that comes upon you is just because it's that time of the year. Not every sickness that comes upon you is because you, you were underdressed and it was really cold that day. No, sometimes the, the sickness that comes upon you is a spiritual attack. And usually you can tell the difference. You can't pray away. <laughs> A sinus infection, if it's really a sinus infection. But if you start to pray when you're feeling sick, you got symptoms of a cold or a flu or a virus or whatever it is, and those symptoms start to dissipate or you start to really receive some relief or you actually hear yourself being delivered, well, then you know. Then you know it's spiritual, but... Let's not forget the authority that we walk in just because we're feeling weak, right? Just because we don't really have the energy or the strength that we we normally do on our best day. We don't have to look our si Sunday finest to be used by God, number one. Number two, we have to be willing to be inconvenienced. We have to be willing to be inconvenienced. Can you imagine if Jesus, on his way up to the cross, while he was sitting there, like a sheep being led to the slaughter, deciding to speak up and be like, you know what, Pilate, I'll tell you whatever you need to know. Just let me go. And I'm not really feeling like sacrificing myself today for all of humanity. Can you imagine if that's what happened? So it's not about how we feel. It's not about what we want to do or don't want to do. See, in this walk, you're going to have to do a lot of things that you don't want to do. And there's going to be times where you're depleted. You're burnt out. You're tired. You're stressed. The truth is that you can't pour into anybody if you're not pouring into yourself. And the only way that you can pour into yourself is to get into the presence of God. And feed your spirit. Let him pour into you. I think that's a better way to say it. Let him pour into you. And then you can pour into other people. You can't pour out of an empty vessel. But if you just sit there and you let yourself be defeated. If you just lay down. And forget that you've been given the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. And forget that life and death is actually in the power of your tongue. And you can command in the name of Jesus for all of your enemies to scatter seven different ways. Turn on themselves, be blinded and confused. 
Don't forget that. Just because you're having a weak moment. Again, God's power shows up perfect in our weakness. Perfect. Lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. Where we are insufficient, he is sufficient every time. Without fail. So just because we feel incapable, incapacitated at the moment, not really up to the task or the challenge, doesn't depend on God. And what I mean by that is your limitations don't tie his hands. Your limitations, your insecurities, your doubts, fears, concerns, they don't tie God's hands. He's still God. He's always going to be God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? So I hope this is an encouragement to somebody today to get your fight back in. Get your fight back. Don't give up. This is not the end. This is just the beginning. Greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. Than all the forces of hell coming up against you. And yes, your flesh may fail. But your God, he doesn't. He can't fail. He is undefeated. He's always been victorious. Even when the odds look like they were, they were against his people. His people walk away victorious every time. So just don't rely on your strength and your ability. Lean into something much, much greater than that. Lean not on your own understanding. Trust God to be God. That's how we wear ourselves out. When we try to do what only God can do. Or when we're trying to pour. Out of a depleted and empty vessel. You will wear yourself out. You have to pour into you. That's great that you want to minister to people and save souls and evangelize for hours on end. But just make sure that you're in your prayer closet. Make sure you're in your word. Make sure you're studying to show yourself approved. Make sure that you're meditating on his word day and night. Make sure that you're building up your spiritual man by praying in the spirit. If you do have the gift of tongues, use it. That's your prayer language. And he didn't give it to you for nothing. So again, um, I'm, I'm sure that everybody out there is dealing with something right now, right? Because I just feel it so strong in my spirit that um, the devil is waging war on a whole other level because he knows his time is short. He knows his time is short. Another reason why he comes after you so bad is because you're close. You're close. You're close enough to taste God's promised land for you. You're just about to cross the threshold of everything he said was yours. You don't know it, but Satan does. So when you get to that place, where all hell breaks loose in your life as a Christian. Please don't get to that place where you're thinking, what what did I do wrong? Right? Because we always get there. What did I do wrong? I must have done something wrong. God's angry with me. No, that's not always the case. A lot of times it's not. It's because you're doing everything right. And I will tell you this. <laughs> You got to think of it this way. When you start stomping on Satan's territory. When you start reestablishing. Dominion that he had for the past. 30 years, 20 years, 15 years. 